Hi, welcome to this week's genealogy coffee break. My name is Halel Yadin. I work at the YIVO Institute for Jewish Research. YIVO is a partner of the centers, which focuses on Eastern European Jewish history. And for today's coffee break, we're going to be talking about Lonsmanshaften records. So first off, what are Lonsmanshaften? They were societies formed by Jewish immigrants from the same town. They provided social and financial support to members, and they ended up serving as very important community hubs. And today, their records are very useful genealogical resources. So Givo's Lonsmanshaften collections. We have nearly 2,000, and they are only growing, as we will discuss in one minute. One quick note. Most Lonsmanshaften aren't exactly called the so-and-so Lonsmanshaft. That's more of a descriptive term. Most were called, not most, I would say the majority, at least within Yivo's collections, were called the Something Society. Benevolent Society is a very popular progressive society, independent society, helper aid society. We have a few unique ones, like the Young Friends Pleasure and Benefit Society. But those are going to be the most common. There are also associations, we have a lot of relief associations, welfare associations, protective associations, benevolent associations, and even less common are brotherhoods, lodges, KUVs, and family circles. But all of those are sort of under the Lonsmanshaften umbrella. It's not foolproof, but the majority of Lonsmanshaften are named after their place of origin. So it's going to be place of origin and one of these kinds of names. So if you are looking for something and you know the geographical background, that's a very good place to start. So Evo's Lonsmanshaften collections come from a variety of sources. First, I want to talk about record group number 123, which, as you can see, is called Lonsmanshaften. Some of the collections that we're going to take a look at in this finding aid are incorporated into RG123 and do not have their own separate collection numbers, and some of them do. They're just listed under 123, even though they are standalone Lonsmanshaften collections. But let's take a look. So I am here in the Center for Jewish History Catalog search at search.cjh.org. I just put in RG123. If I click online access, it takes me right to this finding aid. As you can see, it is long, 62 pages. There are over 1,300 entries here. And everything is alphabetical. So as long as you know the name of what you're looking for, you can see exactly how it is filed. So again, some of them are standalone organizations with their own record group numbers, and some of them are under 123. So if you are looking for a particular collection and you request it, uh, either a reference inquiry straight to us or you're asking for digitization on demand or anything like that, or at some point in the future when the reading room is open and you're just in the reading room. If you have the record group number for the standalone collections, that's usually plenty. RG123 is massive. So if you have the box and the folder number, that is very helpful to include in your request. And just a heads up, if you can see in the finding aid here, that the collection that you're looking for only has one folder's worth of material. It only has one folder's worth of material. So don't, there might be very meaningful and useful material in there, but there's just not going to be a lot. Um, some of these are very, very limited. We might have literally one object or one document from them. The reason that so many of these were filed together under RG123 is that they just didn't have enough to work as standalone collections. So that is a heads up. The ones that were filed separately as their own record group numbers tend to have a little bit more. Another collection that is very useful for Lonsmanshaften research is record group 575 the Workman Circle, or Arbiter Ring. 
Orphan Circle was originally founded as a mutual aid society, and it provided health insurance and burial benefits. And there are a number of things in this collection. The majority of it is actually the administrative records of the Workman Circle Central Office in New York, I believe. But there are, first of all, some records of individual Workman Circle branches, which function at Sloan and Shofton. And there are also a number of ledgers in that collection that provide burial information on 10 Workman Circle plots in the New York metropolitan area. So those entries, if, if you have, if you're looking for somebody who was buried in a Workman Circle cemetery, we have entries most likely that include the name, date of death, the relationship to the member, if it wasn't the member themselves, and the Workman Circle branch number. So that is also something that is good to note. We do have a number of individual donations, just record group numbers that came to us because somebody had material and they donated it. And we also have a partnership with the New York State Liquidation Bureau. It is a New York State agency which deals with the records of insurance companies that go out of business. And because many of these benevolent societies provided insurance to their members, all their records when they shut down are taken by the New York State Liquidation Bureau as part of the liquidation proceedings. So this, this state agency keeps the records for a certain amount of time and then transfers them to EVO. And we have received hundreds of records of individual benevolent societies this way. And they only continue to send us more. So that is something that is ongoing and we still do receive individual donations. So even if we don't have something right now, that doesn't mean we will never have it. So what you can actually expect from the collections, there's really a wide range of materials that are in these. I would say some of the most common things that we have that would be useful for genealogy research are cemetery records and membership ledgers. We also have a lot of financial records, especially in the later collections that came to us from the New York State Liquidation Bureau. Those are actually very financial record heavy, just given the nature of why those collections were put together. A lot of the collections will have meeting minutes, which are really interesting. Um, and then there's really, some of them, there's just fun surprises. Um, a lot of just materials like, you know, invitations to fundraisers, things like that. Please do note, as I mentioned with the 123 finding aid, there are really vastly different amounts of material for each for each um, benevolent society that we have records on. Some of them, literally, it's one folder with one document inside. The ones that have their own record group numbers and are standalone collections are going to be at least one box, kind of by definition. And I have seen them go up to three boxes. So there's just going to be a different amount. And there are 2,000 individual benevolent associations, or nearly 2,000, that are represented in the collections one way or another. So it's very hard to make generalizations about how much there is or what there is for any given collection. The best way to find out is just to email and ask, and I'll provide the email in a few slides. So YIVO is not the only place that has Lawn Van Shoften materials, of course. So I do wanna highlight a few other options if YIVO does not have what you are looking for. One is our partner, the American Jewish Historical Society uh, in New York and in Boston, actually. I just wrote New York here for some reason. I am here in the Lonsman Shofton Records LibGuide. You can find this under libguides.cjh.org. But this is for the American Jewish Historical Society collections. It links 
to all of the collections that AJHS has. So this is the bulk of AJHS's collections regarding Lon Van Shoften. The Hall of Records, Select and Incorporated Papers, with all of these Jewish or Jewish-related organizations, many of them are Lon Van Shoften. Um, there is also a Lon Van Shoften collection that AJHS has for, as it says, approximately 90 benevolent organizations. And here you can just scroll through, see which ones they have. The New York Public Library also has materials. American Jewish Archives in Cincinnati, the Philadelphia Jewish Archives all have Lons Van Shoften materials. One thing that you can always do if you know where somebody is buried is reach out directly to the cemetery. They tend to have their own records that people are able to access through, it really, I mean, it depends on the cemetery, but those are a very good place to also be in contact with. There are a few online resources on top of the Jewish Genealogical Society. They have a burial society project and they have put together a database of over 10,000 entries from almost 100 cemeteries. And that is, there's a lot of different elements of it. So you can search, there are cemetery directories. They have workmen's, they have, this is Yivo's Workman Circle collections. They have a very useful guide to the ledgers here. So that's one great place to start. And then Jewish Gen, which is a part of Ancestry now, has many, many Jewish records, and many of them are burial records and Lonsman Shofton records. So you just hit search and this is very this is very helpful for genealogy research. Just a few final notes before we wrap up. I want to talk about the sort of geography of the materials. Yivo's collections are very, very New York centered. So if you are trying to do research on somebody who is not New York based, it might not be the best institution. Even though the majority of the records are New York City based, which, to be fair, the majority of Lonsman Shoften are New York City based, we do have collections from a number of other cities, especially in the Northeast. We have a lot from Boston and Philadelphia and Newark. We have a lot from Los Angeles. There are a number from Chicago, a few from Michigan. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff. And there are also some international collections, benevolent societies from Canada, especially Toronto and Montreal. We have some from Israel. I know we have one from South Africa. So it's definitely worth looking into. But I do want to sort of give the disclaimer that it is very New York centric. And when in doubt, please reach out. If you want to reach out to a YIVO archivist with a reference question, if you are curious about what specifically is in one particular collection, anything like that, please email archives at yivo.cjh.org. Like most archives, we are working through a backlog, so not all of the Lonsman Shoften collections that we have received, especially in the past few years from the Liquidation Bureau, are in the online catalog yet. So even if you don't see something in the online catalog or in the RG123 finding aid, please do reach out. We may still have it for now until the catalog records are added. Um, the best way to find out is just the email. So thank you for joining me on your coffee break. Please do not hesitate to reach out if you have any questions or comments. And this is all of the information for the Center for Jewish History reference and reading room staff who are also great to email. So thank you so much, and I hope you have a great afternoon.